and it's Big 12 time. That's right. We are headed to Lubbock. We're throwing tortillas around. Uh, we are expected to have 16 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 30 when the Baylor Bears visit the Texas Tech Red Raiders at 4 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. And the current line has Texas Tech favored by six and a half here. Uh, Baylor plus 200 on the money line if you think the Bears win outright. Total of 55 and a half at BetUS. And that gives us an implied score of 31 to 24 and a half. Kyle, let's start with you. We got strength on strength here. We got a good Texas Tech offense against a pretty good Baylor defense. But all the staff changes and all the personnel changes didn't fix that Baylor offense. What are you seeing here? I mean, you, you mentioned it briefly, but I think the weather report is the key here in this one. 21 miles per hour winds, what I'm seeing from National Weather Service, 30 miles per hour wind gusts, 50% chance of rain. Um, clear negative for point scoring, 21 miles per hour winds sustained is pretty intense. And I know a lot of people like to look at whether it's raining or storming. That doesn't matter near as much as the, the wind. And if you get both of them together, it matters the most for sure. Um, I'm going to say full disclosure on this one, guys. I was going to bet the over on this game until the weather report came in. This was going to be one of my plays. I liked it a good amount. I'm going to pass at this point based on uh, the wind. If for, if it gets better later in the week, if we see that it's going to clear up, I will definitely bet the over in this game. Um, it looks like it probably is going to stay the same, though, based on the last couple of days. It's been pretty steady. Um, the question is, who does the weather like this help? I mean, I, I'm not really sure the answer to this question. I think Texas Tech has the better run game, but also the worst run defense. Um, Brooks, I think he should be able to do some work in a game like this. I think he's underrated by most people. Uh, Baylor giving up a lot of explosive runs. He's definitely the type of guy that can do that. Both teams are top 15 in the country in tempo. So I know some people are going to bet the under even at 55 and a half with the wind. I don't think I like under 55 and a half enough just because it's going to be played so fast. So I think both teams could get explosives on the ground. Um, 55 and a half is really low for Baylor, Texas Tech total. Um, slight lean to Texas Tech here for me because I think they can have success in the run game. I do kind of hate laying points, though, with Baron Morton. He's been pretty inconsistent. So uh, just a lean for me. Yeah, the uh, the Red Raiders won and covered last year, 39 to 14. Baylor has won four of the last six straight up. Uh, they are only two and four against the spread in those games, though. Uh, Baylor is one and five against the spread in their last six as a road dog. Tech is eight, five and one against the spread as a home favorite under Joey McGuire. Uh, my five factors plus talent ranking uh, or rating, excuse me, has a, a huge gap here. Uh, I've got tech number 30, Baylor number 66, which tells me that Texas tech is just a significantly more efficient overall team uh, than the bears from what I'm seeing, especially since they got healthier around game three or so uh, Parker. I'm, I'm leaning tech here. Uh, I know Kyle talked about the weather, talked about uh, Texas Tech having the better running game, but the worst running defense. I, I think they've just been playing significantly better. Uh, I'm curious which way your numbers are pointing on this one. Yeah, this is going to be a situation where, you know, uh, that sign can't stop me because I can't read about the weather. I'm just going to ignore that completely because I really do think the gap between these two teams is so substantial. And the situation for Baylor is one of free fall. After blowing a, a late lead to Colorado and losing in overtime, they've lost three straight. If they were going to pick themselves up off the mat and fight for Dave Aranda, it was going to be in the second half of that BYU game where they continued to shoot themselves in the foot and did not take multiple opportunities to turn the game around and come back and win. And then against Iowa State, that game was a one score game at halftime. Baylor gives up 10 points in the fourth quarter, puts up zero and uh, just completely gets run off there. And, and Iowa State's kind of classic uh, vice grip standards. And I, I really think that, you know, off the buy, Baylor's kind of asking themselves what they're going to be doing. They're two and four this season. They have a tough schedule remaining. Where are those four wins for bowl eligibility going to come from? They've got uh, tech rival TCU, uh, feisty Houston defense, a Kansas team that's better than their metrics. Plus, West Virginia and Oklahoma State, which are far from sure things. The schedule is not super favorable, and there are no obvious wins left on their schedule. I think um, on the road in Lubbock, bad weather. It's going to come down to the rushing game. And I am going to believe in Taj Brook and that Texas Tech rush offense. I have them at 11th in EPA for rush. Baylor's defense is 73rd. On the other side of the ball, Baylor is 111th in rushing efficiency on offense. Texas Tech's defense is 14th. I think Texas Tech far outclasses Baylor's. I know that this is a rivalry game. I know things can get weird in, in weather and in Lubbock. I think the motivation gap, I think the situational gap, and I think the efficiency gap is so large that I'm going to ride with the Red Raiders here. Let's go ahead and lock it in then. I, I can't disagree with it. 
I mean, at Texas Tech minus six and a half. Uh, Parker is locking that thing in, and I get it. I 100% get it because Baylor. I mean, their offense. I, I can't. I can't figure anything out with this Baylor team. Uh, they brought in Spavital as the offensive coordinator. It has not clicked. Uh, they didn't. The the big transfer they brought in from Toledo is not even playing now. I mean, it's just a. But, it's but a even, bit if, of a even if even if I may, Gary, you you're telling me, okay, I've got uh, Sawyer Robinson, who's a fine fine quarterback. He's fine. Yeah. Um, I've got Monterey Baldwin, who's one of the fastest dudes in college football. I've got Richard Reese, who was you know all freshman of the year a couple of years ago, and you've got the infrastructure that Jeff Grimes built of the offensive line. Like they they should be better than what 78th or whatever. I have them there. Like it's just not clicking and the, the inefficiency, it looks like they just really have not been able to tighten up the bolts. I agree. I think like a spavital offense with those pieces should be fine. And we have yet to see that at all. There's some, there's some bigger forces going on, I believe. Yeah. I think, uh, I think you were on to it there. Uh, so Parker locking in Texas tech minus six and a half. Uh, let me go and tell you, if you enjoy this show, if you want to help us out, you can do that by liking the video. That little thumbs up button down there. You click that thumbs up. That's going to help us out tremendously. Uh, tell your friends about the show. Uh, hit that notification. Well, hit subscribe if you haven't done that already. You should have done that a long time ago. Uh, but hit the notification bell so that way you know when we go live. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, now every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, Jeff Nadu and Doug Kazarian will be here with you. Uh, 